This is from CNBC. Yelp data shows 60% of business closures due to the coronavirus pandemic are now permanent. There's a big lie in this headline. Did you catch it? Business closures due to the coronavirus pandemic. There are almost zero business closures due to the coronavirus pandemic. There are countless business closures due to the government response to the coronavirus. I don't want to call it a pandemic. I mean, this gets to like the definitional thing. Is it technically a pandemic or not? It's an outbreak. When you say pandemic now, it's just a politically charged term that says, oh, it's really bad. Therefore, some massive social response or government response to this is justified. And you go, no, no, it's it's not. There's no there's no virus out there bad enough that says I get to I get to do something unethical. And, and that you know, as a libertarian, that's how we look at government. If you're violating the non-aggression principle, if you're using force, fraud, or coercion against someone and you're not doing it defensively, then you're the aggressor. You're the criminal here. And we live under a criminal government. Oh, did I say that? Am I going to get censored more for that? This should be news to anybody who's paying attention. Although it is worth pointing out because a lot of people are in denial. They go, oh, yes, of course, our government does this that's criminal. It does that that's criminal. And there's there are these bad people who have who've infiltrated our wonderful government full of loving politicians who only care about making the world a better place and serving you. But no, it, it's really important to recognize that our government is fundamentally in, in its premises by its false authority, by its illegitimate claims to property, as in land and territory, it is criminal. And man, I I don't I don't know why I feel like I have to say this every show, but to point it out, historically even the current constitution is the pr product of an illegal coup. So it should be no surprise that, oh, yeah, now what's it do? What, what's the latest government racket? And again, I want to be optimistic. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Somebody challenged me on this because I, I haven't figured it out. I want, I want my worldview tested. I want, I want people to try to poke holes in it so that we can have that much more confidence in what survives scrutiny. But I, I, I'd i like to think that what we are experiencing now with coronaphobia is a step down in the viciousness of the government racket from the war racket, rackets, right? They're not killing people directly by the millions, but it, in, in what war did they just, shut down entire sectors of the economy. Now, someone's going to go, well, Adam, in this war, they shut down this, and they shut down this, and they seized this, and they nationalized this. Yeah, okay. This, this power grab, nine plus whatever trillion dollars in liquidity added to the market, an acceleration of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poor in a way that we've never seen in human history. It's hard. And maybe it's because I'm in the middle of it and I'm suffering too. We all live in a less vibrant world when our fellow human beings are suffering and they're not able to express their potential in creating value and interacting with their fellow human beings in business and in in media even being censored right so to this yelp on wednesday released its latest economic average report revealing business closures across the u.s are increasing as a result of the coronavirus and you go what's wow, increasing yeah this is and this this article is from today September 16, 2020. Business closures are still 
going up. As of August 31st, 163,735 businesses have indicated on Yelp that they have closed a 23% increase since mid-July. According to Yelp data, permanent closures have reached 97,966, representing 60% of closed businesses that won't be reopening. 100,000. You can round that up, right? 97,966 businesses are now permanently closed in America because of the government, because it's serving its sponsors in the banking and corporate classes. This is not the cliff of unemployment that the government kicked the, kick this party off with. And the real estate crisis, we've seen some of the stories saying, oh, but look, real estate's booming around Vegas and in suburban areas and people are still building houses. But there's an eviction crisis slowly being rolled out. Something that was a can kicked down the road for the uh, with the eviction moratoriums. And remember, they said, all right, look, you can't evict someone, but you're gonna keep you can keep charging them rent. It's gonna pile up. Well, what's gonna all you're doing is is, is forcing landlords to give people free rent until they come out of this on the other side, if there is another side. And it seems like they've been delaying this. They've been, the, the, the government policy since the start of this thing was kind of like, oh, crap, we might have gone too far. Let's let's pump the brakes. Let's slow this down. Let's not go over any cliffs because then we can make it look like we're, we're helping things. We're trying to recover for everybody's sake. We're trying to beat this virus. And the FDA coming out and saying, oh, yeah, we're going to have a cure or we're going to have a we're going to have a vaccine by the end of the year. We're going to be able to rush this one. Cannabis has been around longer than people, and they haven't figured that out. But somehow the coronavirus vaccine, that can be fast tracked. That's the priority. There are a lot of competing factors right now competing conspiracies competing interests and i don't mean competing conspiracy theories competing to explain what's going on i know i mean there are actually and you can you you, you don't have to prove who exactly is doing what to be able to look at what's going on and say this wasn't an accident this wasn't an accident this thing wasn't an accident this part of it wasn't a, this part of the ripoff nine trillion dollars Whoops, no, no, no. There is a clear pattern of, of events where you go, yeah, people are conspiring to make this happen. This is not organic. This is not people acting as their best selves with the best of intentions, trying to make the world a better place for their, their fellow Americans, their fellow human beings. So this is one measure of the pain. And it's going, it's going to keep coming. There are still consequences of the shutdowns and the lockdowns being rolled out. And they are continuing. I had a sense at the beginning of this thing in March. Oh, yeah, it might only be a few months. And then we'll get over it. And we, we looked at the, the four. This, remember, oh, we got to flatten the curve. What was the last time you heard flatten the curve as this is the bit yeah, this is the propaganda now we have to flatten it. this is the justification I know it's not deadly but we have to keep it from being deadly by keeping hospitals from being overwhelmed and therefore we have to flatten the curve and we have to slow the spread even if it gets out in the general population is just part of the global human petri dish Now you don't hear that anymore And I I, I don't want to say I was wrong there because I, I didn't make that as like a hard prediction, but that's what it looked like to a lot of people. Because my prediction was, this is going to go at least a few months. 
And hopefully then it'll start to wind down. But instead, what's happened? The new normal is set in and the economic consequences have been drawn out. There's no V-shaped recovery. That was the that was a nice illusion to justify all the shutdowns. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to fuck things up really, really bad. But then we're going to have a V-shaped recovery and the virus is going to be gone. and Everything's going to be back to normal and you're going to be happy again. Well, I knew better than to believe that from the beginning. But what it seems like now is not just that we've taken this huge dip and there's no V, but that there's going to be a continued economic suppression period as long as they can keep the myth of corona going. And I think it's so important to show these stories and to keep people paying attention. You know, I, I don't want people like, you shouldn't do what I do. You shouldn't read, the, you know, don't read the news all day. It'll make you crazy enough to do your own podcast. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, I, don't spend I, your, your head in the propaganda. Don't, don't spend your days with your head in the propaganda. Don't let them, you know, live rent free in your brain. But pay enough attention to help your fellow Americans, your fellow human beings, everyone around you understand what's going on. Because a lot of people don't. A lot of people, I mean, 60% of these business closures, 100,000 100, businesses in America closed permanently gone over the last six months. And by the way, that what, what about the other 40% that are closed? How many of them are just holding on right now? And this fraud around the shutdowns and, and, and the uh, coronavirus, It's it's really sick when you think about what that is doing psychologically to people now. Hey, we've got a virus. Everybody panic. It's going to be bad. Wear masks, but we're going to get over it. We're going to redirect resources. We're going to flatten the curve. And then, <laughs> oh, you thought when we flattened the curve, we were going to give you your freedoms back? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Why? We like it when you're struggling. We like it when you're dependent on government. We like it when you're just barely holding on. Why would they let that go? And the people who are really struggling, I mean, you got a business you're trying to hold on to. You got a family you're trying to support. You don't have time to read the news. You're going to see it through your social media distorted, biased lens. It puts you in the bubble of, of only listening to people who agree with you. All you have to do is put a few pieces together to realize what kind of racket this is, what kind of scam this whole thing is, and how sick it is to get people holding on. Hold on, hold on. I'll be right there. I'll be right there to save you. I'll be right there to grab your hand and keep you from falling off the cliff with our PPP relief funds and our emergency coronavirus money. And then, oh, I'm sorry. There's no, oh, there's no money left for you. You poor little piece of shit peon business owner. No, this money's for corporate America. Didn't you, didn't you get the memo? You didn't, you didn't know? You didn't realize this? And if it's not, if, if it's not painfully obvious now, I don't know what it's going to take, but I am so hopeful that the lesson that we get out of this is going to be the silver lining that propels us out of this crisis with positive momentum. You want a V-shaped recovery. We're still going down in the V if you want to talk about lessening of freedom, lowering of your rights. And you have, a, and when I say, that, I, I, oh, you're free. Well, if you've been stolen from, you're not, you're not really enjoying the freedom that you're entitled to. Uh, let me make this point clear. If I work, you know, my entire life and uh, work for a private company and uh, earn a pension and, you know, and, 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 I, and I've got that, I'm, I'm retired and I got, uh, you know, comfortable income and, and a house and then government comes along and steals it. They steal the house, they steal the income and put me out on the street and then disappear. 
Well, I'm free. Government's gone. Government's not impeding with my freedom now. But no, you are still a victim of statism. And in that sense, what's being stolen from us, the amount of, of, of legitimate economic freedom to enjoy the wealth that we have earned, that we deserve, it's still going down and down and down and down. But if America listens to the voices of reason, if America learns the critical lesson from this experience, which is that the purpose of government is to keep the rich getting richer and the poor poorer, then maybe we'll have a longer term V-shaped recovery for freedom. At least that's one of the hopes that keeps me going.